Greetings Padawans and welcome to the Archives. Here to unlock this holocron is the man of the hour, Jedi Master Sotiko. Boshaw, what is good guys? This is your boy Sotiko joined by my good buddy, my favorite guy to talk Star Wars with. It is MJ back in the house and this is episode 21 of the Archives podcast. If you guys haven't been paying attention we have a brand new logo brand new introduction and same twitter at star wars tap we are running a contest free funko pop all you have to do is retweet the tweet reply with your friend subscribe to us on youtube follow us on twitter and you're entered free funko pop it's that easy bam boom bop now Today, we have a very fun podcast for you. Me and MJ are going to be out here today talking some Star Wars. We're going to be talking a little bit about the prequels, talking about Qui-Gon Jinn, and covering some news that has came out that is going to make men uncomfortable. Now, to kick it off, I say we start in the news. I say we start in the news, MJ. Recently, you know, we've both seen this. I don't know her yeah. name. You know her name. I do, I do. Her name is uh, Charmaine Oboid Chinoy. And she's recently said that she wants this Ray movie to quote unquote make men uncomfortable. What are your reactions to that? Um, so uh, that uh, it's it's really drama filled for sure. But um, so that line was taken out of context from a few years ago in one of her interviews involving her activism. <laughs> and it's I don't really have a real reaction to that per se. Um, my reactions more along the lines of her saying that she was an untrained filmmaker um mm -hmm. that's my take on the whole thing um i think everybody has their panties in a bunch let the movie come out let's review it then you're review bombing it when it doesn't even have a script yet it, yeah. you know what i mean like it's rough for sure we live in a society where negativity overrules the positivity in my in my honest opinion um mm -hmm. It's definitely a hot fire for sure. Just it's taken out of context and driven beyond stretch, like a rubber band. You know, it's reached its snapping point. Mm -hmm. So, see, yeah. this is where I'm at, though. This is where I'm at, though. It's not even about the boy and girl thing. I, because I, I don't care who makes a movie. My whole thing is. How cool would it have been if she said, I want everyone to see this Ray movie and I would love it if Star Wars fans thought it was sick. That would have probably been the, pref the preferred route to go, you know, considering marketing is just, you know, it's how you market. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to start. Um, marketing by having a quote taken out of context saying you want to make half the genders uncomfortable so because i mean he didn't they did, she didn't really i mean even though it's an out of context clip that clip and quote pissed off i think everyone mm -hmm. not just not just piss people off but like it got people talking which that in and of itself it's not a bad thing but when you have people from outside star wars starting to talk about like oh star wars is dead star wars sucks it kind of puts a stain on the entirety of the franchise when in reality guys like you and me will always enjoy everything that comes between the old republic and episode six right 
Right. Saying that Star Wars is dead is kind of a... It's a moot comment. It moot is. Comment. It is. It's a. It's an edgelord comment. And one that I've just never, never got behind, never understood. But I will say that I'm actually excited for this Ray movie. I want to see what's going on in the universe. I want to learn more. I want to see what's up with Ray. I want to see what's up with her compatriots. What's the new New Republic looking like? You know, what do they call it? New, new, new. <laughs> yeah. The new two. I'm pretty sure they got something, you know, authors always find a way to make something either really great or really kaput. So mm -hmm. I don't imagine it being new, new. It's definitely going to be something cooler. <laughs> As far as expectations for this movie, are you setting a low bar so you don't get upset, or are you setting a standard bar or a high bar? I'm gonna say I'm gonna set the bar medium because we're 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 treading a path that no one really knows it's the unknown you know what i mean mm -hmm. we're going beyond the sequels now we're going sequel sequels so it's definitely an interesting take and to see on how or what and where we're gonna go mm -hmm. so it'd be nice to see john boyega come back for sure it would because not just to see him back, but I think he deserves a solid go. I think he deserves a solid go. I think episode seven had the best intentions for Finn, had the best intentions for John Boyega. And then the China stuff happened. And then the last Jedi happened. And then the rise of Skywalker happened. Granted the rise of Skywalker, it did portray him as force sensitive so it was a step in the right direction but i hate to circle back to this the last jedi messed him over so much they took everything that that we had built up with him a former stormtrooper defects joins the rebellion force sensitive and then gets turned into a comedy character. Just like that. Gets turned into the token black guy. Just like that. You know? It didn't feel good. You look at Han Solo. He has a natural arc between the, the three movies. You look at Luke Skywalker. Natural arc between the three movies. Leia Organa. Natural arc between the three movies. Lando Calrissian. Natural arc over the two movies. It goes from scoundrel, goes from sleazeball to literal war hero. You know, guy yeah. bending over backwards for the empire to guy literally defeating the empire. What did Finn do? What did they make Finn do? Ride horses on a star destroyer? <laughs> yeah, I mean. I feel so bad. I love the character and the ideology behind it. And I feel like if you or I was tasked, hey, here's this character. He's a stormtrooper. He's defecting. He's force sensitive. He's joining the rebellion. Write a story for him. I feel like me, you, everyone listening to this, their grandmother and their unborn babies are writing a better story for Finn. I honestly don't get how they passed up on such a compelling character. I think it had to do with handing the plot or script, uh, you know, whichever the right choice of words is, the plot or script, over to another director, you know? Yeah. The, the three movies were handled between Ryan and JJ. Yeah. I think that was the issue there. It wasn't one straight path. They literally took a detour, and that detour literally detoured all of these characters, and then JJ tried to set it back on track. Mm-hmm. Do you think it would have been better if JJ did episode eight, Ryan did episode nine? No, 
I think it should have just been one straight vision. Yeah. Honestly, because you have two people coming yeah. in and you can see it from episode seven and eight that the visions were not aligned. It was definitely two different pictures. Mm -hmm. So I think that was just a problem in itself. What if they were like, hello? Hey, is this uh, Dave Filoni? Awesome. You know that, that hit show that you've been making for years? No, not Rebels, the other one. Clone Wars. Yeah, that one as well. Yeah, we love your resume. Why don't you come in? We have a trilogy for you. Yeah, we're going to put a team together right now. Bye. Hi, is this Sam Witwer? Guy who knows more than about Star Wars than anything? Hey, how would you like to be an executive producer on Star Wars? Awesome. We'll see you soon. Later. Johnny, yeah. John Favreau, you're done with Marvel? You're done with Iron Man? You want to come make Star Wars? Let's do it. Team of three. Put them in a I dark mean, room together. Hey, give me a trilogy, guys. Here's the premise. That, that logic is too nerdage for a board meeting <laughs> and people in suits. <laughs> yeah, but um, Favreau is as suit as a nerd is going to get, though, you know? I, I don't know. I feel like they are throwing darts at a notepad board with mm -hmm. ideas. And whichever it hits, they're like rolling with it. And yeah. I mean, like we got the Ahsoka show, um, Book of Boba, um, Bad Batch. Now we have the Acolyte coming out, the Ray trilogy coming out. I mean, albeit it's still good. We're getting content, whether it's good, bad, mid, you know? Mm hmm. I here's the thing Let, like let's talk about the Disney releases and just uh, give me a, a W and L or an M for mid right Rogue One W W easy W Rebels W mid you're not a fan of Rebels that's fair so I mean <laughs> To put it bluntly, the thin lightsabers, even though it was a homage, it really turned me off of the show until like like last year when I actually watched it. And yeah. it was good. I'm not even gonna lie. It was a great show. So I mean But it had yeah, a definitely. it had a red flag for you. Yeah, W for sure. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fair. No, you can say mid. It's okay. Um next thing to come out would have been the Force Awakens, in which I had no complaints because it got us talking. And, like, when The Force Awakens was the only movie that had come out, for the episodic series at least, everyone loved it. No one no. hated on The Force Awakens. So. Honestly, yeah. W, in my opinion. I actually went and saw that movie in the theaters with my pops um, and my brother. We actually really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It was, episode 8 and 9, though, we didn't. You didn't? Nah, we didn't uh, go see it together. I actually didn't go see 9 in the theaters at all. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Watched it at home and, like... <laughs> As far as, I mean, hey. So after Seven was solo, I didn't see it in theaters because I was broke. I just couldn't afford it. But I it was a W. Either. I love it. Yeah, a W too. I love it. And then The Last Jedi came out. I have to say L. L. I really I, want to say mid, but I can't because every movie looks good. You can't give it the, the crutch that, oh, the cinematography was great. It was. Every movie coming out these days looks good. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I like, I, I 
love Star Wars. I want to say M, but I have to say L. And so, it hurts. Yeah, with The Last Jedi, it's a huge L for me because me and Miss MJ went and saw that. Mm -hmm. And twice and throughout the movie, I stood up and I'm not even going to lie. I raged. I was like screaming. Did you? In the sense, I was like, what the f is that? Dude, Snoke got cut in half. And he's supposed to be this big villain from The Force Awakens, which already was a W. He was force choking people just like Vader, except stronger. He was choking people across galaxies. Kylo Ren, you know what I mean? Like he was, he choked Kylo Ren out. He was literally intimidating. This disfigured person was just something, some like you expected his midichlorian count to be well, at least near Anakin's or at least more. And he was just chopped bread, chopped liver that pissed me off i see interesting i love that throne scene everything about it there's not a thing about that throne scene that i don't dislike that i don't dislike that i don't yeah that you don't like i love everything about it i think that's the best scene in that movie now little old trev probably on a date you know Going to see The Last Jedi. Sitting there with his popcorn, with his cherry icy. He's watching FN2187. In his little land, the little land scraper. Racing towards the, the First Order battering cannon. About to sacrifice himself to blow up the entire First Order. I'm like, holy crap. Here we go. This is it. This is his freaking character arc. This is what he is meant to do. This is what he was born to do. A conscripted soldier stolen from birth as a child, taken by the First Order, raised in the First Order, left the First Order, joined the Rebellion, and is about to end the First Order. And out of nowhere comes Rose Deco. Literally, if Finn dies right there, it is a W movie. <laughs> Genuinely. Kylo can still live somehow. He has the force. He can rely on the dark side to keep him alive through the explosion. Gives him another reason to put the mask back on, right? His face is deformed. Whatever. Finn deserved to die. How crazy is that? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think Paul and Finn deserve to die, honestly. Yeah, because now he, he like, he kind of just looks like a bitch. Like, you were just about to take the easy way out? Like, we're trying to escape? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you're not wrong there. Rose ruined Star Wars. No. <laughs> if, dude, no. if that happens, they can escape. They can raise the rocks. Ray can go, where's Finn? Poke and cry. Poke and cry. <laughs> Yeah, the first movie, you sacrifice Han. The second movie, you sacrifice Finn. In the last movie, I, I think both the twins can go. Luke and Leia. You know, Leia to start. Then Luke goes out to... Uh, not even... No, no, no. Luke at the start of the movie... And then Leia whips out the lightsaber at the end. So even though The Last Jedi was an L, I will say my favorite part of that movie um, was Luke's force projection. That was some we'd never seen before. I, you know I, mean? I had no issue with it, genuinely. Yeah. I had no issue with it because that was the only way. He couldn't get off the island. He was oh. literally stuck there. Ray took the X-Wing. So, at that point, it was chalked. Or Ray didn't take the X-Wing, did she? I, mm, I want to say yes, but I don't remember. No, that was in The Last Jedi. The Last yeah. Jedi. Or no, The Rise of Skywalker, I mean. Because she went to burn the books finally or whatever. Right? No. I don't know. I didn't really watch it with some 
It was no, it was episode nine. She took Kylo's ship. Yeah. And then took the X-wing. There we go. Cool. Figured Ooh, that part out. Man, it, it's it's tricky trying to figure those movies out. They're kind of scattered, and it's all within like a a year and a week. It's very tight. Well, how did you feel about Super Leia? You know, Wonder Leia. I didn't that like that. That was the second part that made me stand up and go, what the f is that? <laughs> I didn't like that because if... Ilo should have just killed her and had been done with that. Like, mm -hmm. like, she didn't have to force bubble herself and then fly away. She literally became a meme at that point. And here's the other thing that didn't make sense about that. So, First Order Special Forces TIE pilot sends in the rocket, blows up the bridge. Ben thinks his mom is dead. Mm-hmm. Maybe he feels her alive. We don't know. But I I start that as his ultimate fracture point. Right? Because first, right. he killed his father. Yeah. He got shot by his uncle. He supposedly watched his mom die. And then he got bitched by his supreme leader. And I think that egging him on was the straw that broke the camel's back and then he said F, f this i'm killing him but we never go back to that holy crap my mom's still alive like we never go back to that so but she just dies on the table right yeah eventually yep i think or no she comes back and she's wearing the little uh head wrap and she stuns Poe, and she's good. Because then she goes on to train Rey as a Jedi. We don't, f like, see her die until the next movie where maybe he still thinks that she's dead. And because he's so surprised when he feels her die, that's why he, like, freezes. He's like, holy crap, my mom actually just died. I felt it. And then Rey stabs him. Yeah, on the Death Star. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think that's accidentally what happened i don't think they intended that because they never revisited that until that point which it's nuts because at that point like he's he's broken he's lost he's and i really want to know why he hates luke so much right and that's why i took it upon myself to write the book that creates the crack and the fracture in their relationship because i want my own ideas to be canon i don't want anyone else's ideas because they're going to do it wrong and we have to take george lucas's luke skywalker and somehow get him to jj abrams where he's standing there on the ledge of the mountaintop we have to get them from point A to point B. In between, Luke has to raise his nephew, train his nephew. And somewhere in the middle of there, their relationship has to go wayward. And I'm taking it upon myself to write that. Granted. Awesome. Yeah. Granted, I'm doing it with... An original character of my own. Have I told you about my book? Um, you might have mentioned it, not the original character. Okay, so podcast exclusive for you guys. A little tell all. Character's name is Nathan. He is, uh, when we meet him, he's 10 years old on Tatooine. His parents were, his mother was a maid um, for a rich imperial warlord, his father was a slave. For that same house they met when they were very little kids they fell in love when they turned 18 they ran away together they went across across the uh across the planet and started a new life um the father started working at a cantina uh as just a dishwasher because he had no resume like he's a slave he doesn't know anything better than hard work and the mom works there as well until she doesn't have to because the dad goes on 
to inherit the place and he becomes the owner um so for five years they are doing their thing they're living they're trying to have a kid and they just they just can't happen they've been trying for five years hasn't happened and by some will of the force by some will of the force they get pregnant and they have a kid kid turns out to be nathan he is force sensitive but because this is tatooine where you've heard stories like inquisitors have visited tatooine slaughtered people just for knowing a jedi they've seen jedi strung up in the middle of the street like we have to protect him we can't let it get out that he has powers of the force so for 10 years they keep him as um they keep it as quiet as possible that he has the force and they they teach him to always be calm you know never let your emotions get too much of you just be a good kid which he is uh the first day of the book it's his birthday it's his 10th birthday and he goes to hang out with his buddy he gets a brand new droid a pit droid which he's always wanted a droid his dad always wanted a droid but just never could afford it for himself so they got it for his son um so he takes his speeder bike and it's cool because his speeder bike is the same one that they use in the endor like the endor raid the the 74 cool. yeah the 74 z speeder and he, he has it pimped out he he goes like 300 miles an hour on it it's crazy so he goes to hang out with his uh his best friend um raj um raj isn't home but who is home his grandfather who's his grandfather kitster anakin's old best friend you know and now he now he's a decrepit old man but because nathan is like so he's such a a fan of racing and speeder bike racing and pod racing like he knows of the name anakin skywalker it's the only human that's ever won the boon to eve race well kitster has this little puck and it's a hollow image of anakin winning the race and he gives it to nathan for his birthday and they go on to hang out raj is kind of this little like little scumbag friend that like you your parents don't like that you're friends with but you're friends with him because you've known him your whole life right raj steals a blaster from this drunk guy who's just drunk laying out on the street and he gives it to nathan as his birthday present well they get caught by a deputy because kids can't have guns and Raj runs away because he's a little scumbag kid. Nathan gets in trouble. So rather than hang out with his friends for his birthday, he has to go to work with his parents. Because um, his, his dad's not upset with him because he knows he's a good kid. But he still has to like come down on him a little bit and say, like, well, it's not your fault, but like you just can't be doing that stuff. So he goes to work with his parents he and he hates working at, at the cantina because all he does is he picks up like the the chewing tobacco spit cans and mops up all the spilt drinks and stuff and at one point like this guy trips him because you know how drunks are in bars they're just dicks this guy trips him and then uh he looks up and he sees this random dude is just like messing with his mom and like harassing his mom and he gets so angry to the point that he doesn't know how he did it or what he did but he used the force and he force pushes the guy against the wall the guy clatters against the wall everyone just stops and stares in bewilderment his dad rushes and is like shuts down the cantina and nathan's crying his mom's crying they don't really know what's going on what to do they're sitting there for like an hour just talking as a family like, you know, maybe we need to leave. Maybe we need to go off planet. Like, you never know who saw this or what happened. And all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door of the cantina. And there's a cloaked figure at the door. And Nathan's dad thinks that they're here to take Nathan. Well, they are there to take Nathan. But the man walks in black cloak black glove on his right hand and 
Nathan's dad asks, are you a Jedi? And he says, I am. And that's the end of chapter one. Um, don't want to spoil it beyond that, but Luke Skywalker picks Nathan up and takes him to the academy. He felt his force so much when he was just riding around the X-Wing that he was like, I got to go to Tatooine right now. And That's solid. Yeah. So Nathan and Ben, they're going to be like best friends. And eventually their relationship's going to fracture over favoritism, over nepotism, over just trying to be the best Jedi. And I have a bunch of really dope plans for it. Um, but eventually, like, it's going to be a three-man rodeo with supporting characters and everything. But it's mainly going to be about these three. And my goal is to just do justice to George's characters and try and make sense of Kylo Ren because he deserves it, too. It's like, he's such a pivotal character. And in my estimations, Kylo's the main character of the sequels. I agree. And if you look, if you watch the sequels, and I challenge you to do this next time you like watch the movies, just think about Ben as the main character. No matter what's on the screen, just be like, how is this impacting the story of Ben? You do have to do a lot of the puzzle by yourself, but it does help the story at the end of the day. For sure. Mm -hmm. Have you... Have you ever, like, put Ben's arc and Anakin's arc next to each other and just kind of compared them a little bit? Because they're well, kind of I mean, inversed. Yeah, originally, even uh, Adam Driver stated in an interview that his arc was literally supposed to be the direct opposite of Darth Vader's, of where he starts out vulnerable and ends up confident, whereas Darth's was the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I loved about, like, well, let's talk about Vader for a bit. Let's talk about Anakin for a bit. He gets picked up by Qui Gon, and it's a very, like, my book is a very, it's obviously paying homage and giving nods to what I, I call good Star Wars, right? Where Luke is the Qui Gon type character, saving this kid from a situation that, you know, he. Like he's a poor kid on a, on a tough planet. Um, but the thing that I never understood with Anakin was, you know, why, if the Jedi didn't believe in him, why didn't they just send him back? Was, was Qui-Gon's dying wish like that much of a, an honorable thing to... Like that, I feel like that speaks volumes about Qui Gon. No one on the council wanted him to be a Jedi. They all agreed, no, he's not going to be it, because council decisions had to be unanimous. If one person didn't agree, they deliberated until all minds were changed or everyone was on the same page. So everyone on the council of thirteen Jedi masters said this kid is not going to be a Jedi. Was Qui Gon thought of and respected that much? that they allowed it to happen if so why didn't they send more jedi to naboo why didn't they believe him about the sith you know that i'm unsure of um but for qui-gon i was going to say that it was his dying wish you know that obi-wan trains that boy mm -hmm. so and i guess i mean they didn't want to lose another jedi either like they knew the sith were back this kid, this kid Obi Wan killed the Sith, supposedly. They didn't want to lose another Jedi, cause they lost Qui Gon. If they wouldn't let Obi Wan train him, Obi Wan was gonna leave the Order and still train him. So it was kind of either do we want this to happen within the confines of our our house or. Do we want to let it off rogue? And granted, I mean, they let it happen in the confines of their own house, but at the end of the day, was that the right decision? Should they have just sent Anakin back? I think they just didn't scatter the galaxy 
galaxies you know what i mean because george said that everybody is force sensitive it's yeah. whoever is born with you know more talent than the rest you know mm -hmm. anakin was one of those where he had more talent than the rest you know so i mean but they always had the chosen one prophecy going along so yeah from the regions because there is unknown regions in star wars you know the heir to the empire era it, it discusses all of that yeah um, and we've seen it with ahsoka yeah mm -hmm. so i mean from what they were able to uh what's the word i'm looking for look around you know they only found really anakin and qui-gon and qui-gon was really him. the only guy out there too yeah he was really the really. only guy in the outer rim everyone was focused more towards the inner rim the mid rim qui-gon was really that guy he was him yeah i personally believe he had a wisdom far greater than yoda's even though yoda is yeah i think yeah 100 percent. that's very fair considering qui-gon was within 60 years old safe to say um and yoda was what 840 850 at the time yeah pretty safe you to can say learn a lot not a lot like that amount of time yeah so i think yoda had the longevity yeah but like you watch hockey he yeah he he had 10 goals a year 10 points a year um but he was he was in the first line for his whole career and it's like that's it you're only putting up 10 points a year man and he did it for 20 years like who why do you guys keep signing this guy back like why do you keep giving this guy a max contract yoda was really the Yoda held the Jedi hostage due to how long that fucker could live. Yeah. Like, he probably got anointed Grand Master when he was, like, 220 just because they had no one else good enough. We need that kind of story, man. We need to get into the young days of Yoda. <laughs> surely. Surely. Whether it's a comic, whether it's a show. How do you feel about Grogu? golden egg my dude like that's the reason behind yoda is because he's just so mysterious mm -hmm. literally the first sight of little grogu the first words out of everybody was that's a baby yoda mm -hmm. you can't get any more joyful than that you know what i mean in emotions and just happiness you know it it's literally a golden egg and yeah they knew that that would sell and it does for sure i mean yeah i'm excited to see where grogu goes kind of a little peeved he picked the you know the under armor compared to the laser sword <laughs> but um that, that's the dumbest decision in disney star wars genuinely <laughs> No kid is turning down a fucking lightsaber. Bro, they care. literally get to. <laughs> they <laughs> like he can, They literally get to write whatever comes after episode nine. It can be a dark side Grogu. That'd be fine. Fan fucking fantastic. I'm so for it. That'd yeah, be awesome, dude. He has the trauma. Like he went through Order sixty six. He doesn't want the Jedi back. He wants to slaughter the Jedi. Could you honestly imagine seeing that as the la as the newest trilogy villain? Like, yeah, you know, we had a Grandmaster Yoda. What if we have a he is the, Master Yoda? If you put every character that we've seen on shows, he is the least likely to be the biggest villain. Just like if you only watch episode one, who's the least likely villain? The fucking Chancellor. Now let's say they do announce it right and in the trailer say this is the trailer it's ray you know there's ray dialogue narration going on right for about maybe a 45 second <laughs> teaser trailer 
you get cinematics of a uh, Jedi Academy being built. You see paddle ones, you know, waving their little lightsabers, training droids. And then you just hear, I guess, a dark side version of Yoda speaking like Yoda, but mm -hmm. intimidating, menacing dialogue. You know what yeah. I mean? And then it just pan. I mean, dude, you would have to like, I don't know, raise Grogu another two feet or something to like Yoda's height. Because he is a little short dude right now mm -hmm. at the age of 50. He's growing but, um, rapidly. Like he's starting to talk. He doesn't really have like, like Yoda had eyes. You know what I mean? And I'm not yeah. saying that Grogu doesn't have eyes, but and, like he just got black pupils. Yeah. So, like, he's like, a, I mean? he's like a big old Funko Pop. Yeah, for real. Like a big old Funko Pop or something to that effect. And to, you can't really see him go dark side yet because what would it be? Just yellow pupils? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's basically like anime eyes. We've seen sun. him go, we've seen him use dark side before. He's force choked before. Yeah, but force choked he Cara Dune. Right. And so that is that uh, that goes to, um, I don't know if it's Qui Gon's teachings. It's definitely Luke's teachings because he uses Force Choke as well. Yeah. It how like that. I think on the, one of the previous podcasts we discussed on how the Force should be used, and I was a neutral about it. You know, it's how you use the Force. You know, if you're gonna use it to kill people, you're definitely evil. If you're gonna use it to make sure that things are peaceful and good. You're definitely good. Yes. Like Force Choking an evil robot does not make you evil. It makes you a good person because you're saving people. So. I'm with you. I would like it. And so, like I said, uh, following the trailer, say we did see a version of Grogu growing up and he's Sith. Do you feel like there needs to be context added to, because we've already seen Grogu now. He's a youngling in a sense. He's a foundling, sorry. I think uh, you have to, you have to see the turn. I agree. You have to, like, maybe the Mando movie, Heir to the Empire. That's, like, yeah, that's why I think Kylo Ren, like, we see the turn, but, like, we're not happy with how it happened. Like, Luke wouldn't right. do, Luke, Luke's character that we knew wouldn't do that. Granted, he did it. We don't think that he would have done that. And that's why I think it's devalued. Whereas if Grogu puts his little... Uh, Shoto lightsaber deep into Ray's heart. Like, I don't think people would hate that. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, do you watch wrestling at all? Uh, I mean, I'm I was a fan of it, and then I stopped watching it. So you know so, how forever in a day, Roman Reigns was the good guy that got booed. Everyone hated him. Right. But he was like the top guy, the Ray, mm -hmm. basically. Everyone who n needed to get over got over through Roman. Like Braun Strowman kicked the shit out of Roman for ages, made him huge. If Grogu pulls a Braun Strowman and just kills Rey, everyone's gonna be like, holy crap, Dark Side Grogu, Dark Side Baby Yoda, Dark Side Yoda, this is sick. This is Star Wars is back. Genuinely, I think that that would be fire. And what a way to kill off a character, too, than passing the torch to the next generation. You have her her apprentices who can carry on her legacy, her kid, whatever. But then they have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Grogu. Definitely needs a good script writer. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, 100%. 100%. But Grogu bringing back the like, teachings of the Sith. Bringing back... It doesn't even need to be the rule of two. OG Sith, you know, Sith armies, Sith ass assassins, Sith understudies, Sith apprentices, Sith troopers. That would be cool. Kind of like what Palpatine was trying to build, but cooler. Because Palpatine... Pal okay, is Palpatine overrated? Because the Sith ended with him. Is he overrated? The rule of two was going fine. <laughs> I mean, at this day and age, yeah, Palpatine's overrated because he's been kicking since the seventies. <laughs> yeah, but like, let's talk about Palpatine that's a bit. That Snoke died, you know what I mean? Like we lost Snoke, and it's like, 
back to pal yeah it's like, wow palpatine it wasn't even his plan either it was plagueis's plan let's not give him all the all the reins right mm. plagueis's plan palpatine was just there he was the he was the face of it and i think that's ultimately why the empire failed if plagueis was running the empire i don't think it fails no it doesn't he was like 10 steps ahead of everybody except palpatine that's because he taught him everything he knew and yeah that's just and, you, you don't tell somebody your weakness and i think if, to my knowledge plagueis literally told him everything everything it's a wrap you're done <laughs> yeah um but yeah palpatine lost two death stars lost a galactic civil war like the only time that the war was ever equal terms because the first war the um clone wars fucker was he was cheating like he was switching he was switching sides mid mid game he was switching controllers mid game whereas he tried to do that on the civil war and he's like oh crap this is online i can't switch <laughs> i'm, I'm stuck I can't pause. <laughs> yeah i'm stuck they got me stunned oh mustard the only time it was ever fair fucker got beat yep twice twice and then again and then again so palpatine i think is overrated hot take i'm sorry hot take how you feel about palps like just in, in general in general because he's kind of like an annoyance he's kind of a blister he's kind of an ache like he's a cramp he's always there it's the hump in the camel's back yeah he's a he's a bastard that's a good way to put it um i'm just glad he's dead and if for some god dang reason i hear somehow palp returned mm -hmm. again i'm flipping my hat 100 <laughs> percent. you have to at that rate He's literally disintegrated. At this <laughs> point. There's no way. So, if magic. <laughs> this next segment as a fire opening. This next segment is <laughs> called the Squiggo Sector. Essentially, just talking about Galaxy of Heroes, what's to come. I just uploaded a video, and I'll recap it. It was my top 20 characters that I want to see added to the game. 15 new characters, 5 reworks. And I'll give you the list right now. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. So a little like abbreviated version of the video. Uh, number one was Rom Kota from The Force Unleashed as a star killer, okay. like a lifter for that team. Okay. Um, a Jedi tank with rebellion synergy. Um, but really he, his kit only synergizes like in his unique, all the, all the stuff would be like, there has to be a dark side unaligned force user who's an attacker. Like he has to go with star killer. Essentially. There's no ifs, ands or buts about it. Um, number two and three go in the same team. It's for a Qui-Gon lift. It's Jedi Knight Dooku and Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi. Dooku would I mean, be a tank because of how he, like, the, the scene in mind was the Tales of the Jedi, where he's taking all those bullets for the town. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that, that was sick. And he could have, like, a mass defense kind of move. And then Kenobi I had as a support that can change stances when his stacks of aggression get high enough. Kind of like with... Uh, he was more defensive with Maul and let Qui-Gon take the lead. But then when Qui-Gon died, like, he went attack mode. And I thought that that was cool. Um, number, what do we got? Four, five, six, seven, and eight. All are requirements for character number nine. So, Balin Skull, Shin Hati, neutral, unaligned force users. I think that would be pretty sick. Orange lightsabers and all. And I said, it'd be cool if their neutral relic thingy was orange instead of gray. That'd be cool. Um, what it? Then we have Jedi Knight Ezra Bridger. 
we have Sabine Ren Padawan with the Jedi tag. And then Ezra and Sabine also have the New Republic tag. Because we're, we're starting a new tag. Then we have Night Sister Morgan. Just a Night Sister lifter, like a, a tank. If you want to get rid of a zombie, put zombie with someone else. Um, and because I, she has the sword now, so it's it's cool. Then we have the legendary for all these characters. Jedi Master Ahsoka Tano in her white outfit. Then, Satil Shan, Jedi Knight Revan Lifter. And then we have the Knights of Ren, SLKR Lifters. Brand new team for SLKR, so you can put First Order with First Orders. Um, make two solid First Order teams now. You can put a tank in each team, etc. And you don't have to put four of them with SLKR. You can have the Knights of Ren. And then I'll pause there because four of the next characters go with a rework. Um, first rework is for Darth Maul. I want him to essentially just have some synergy with Savage Opress. Give him like a TW Omicron that activates Savages in TW or something like that. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Old Ben rework. Make him... When he dies, come back as a force ghost if he's with Commander Luke. So, because me and JT were playing with uh, CLS All Conquest, and we were like, damn, they could really use a tank. So, that's that's a little offshoot one. Cassie and Andor, give him a rework. He had a great show, and he looks too freaking cartoony. He looks too goofy. Uh, Darth Vader. I think he needs a home. So in order to do so, probably rework him a little bit. And then last rework is Grand Admiral Thrawn. We're going to rework his lead and his uniques. Because with Thrawn, we're adding his uh, assassin, Rook. We're adding Captain Enoch. We're adding the Night Trooper. And the Knight Death Trooper. And that's the new five-man Thrawn team. That'd be pretty dope. Mm -hmm. I can see one of his uniques getting remade to, you know, be heir to the Empire. Oh, 100%. Because he's going to be the new Emperor. He's going to be the new Emperor. He's back. Yep. Like, he's at Geonosis. Uh, yeah, he's at Geonosis. No, he's at Dathomir. Sorry. Yep. And... The yeah, he's gonna. I'm dude, I'm actually, I'm hype. I, I liked the ending because now Ahsoka is off in the galaxy, they're trapped. Sabine's off in the galaxy, they're trapped. Ezra is in town. Who else is in town? Wielding a lightsaber, Luke Skywalker in the same town as yeah. where they were. Mm hmm. Dude, Luke is Luke's back. Why didn't that click in my brain? Where did they? Where were they? Where did they go? They went to Dathomir. Literally, yeah, the planet to next to Dathomir is Luke's temple. On Yavin. Mm hmm. So that's I think what I'm saying like yeah, I think Luke's gonna come back and save the day. Cause Ahsoka's stuck. Yeah. I think it'll take Ahsoka some time, and by the time she gets there, Luke's going to be handling the business. I feel like some space whale's going to come out and save them. Yeah, or something with, like, the little uh, Japanese-speaking crabs. Because it, yeah. it, it was funny. Um, someone on Twitter was like, they're literally just speaking Japanese. I can translate it. <laughs> just really high-pitched Japanese. But, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I... How did you feel about the Ahsoka show? I know we talked about it, but... After the finale, there was just a lot of discourse going on. And most of it was, like, negative. But we need to remember with these shows, like, we're, this is only a chapter of the story. Mm -hmm. 
where people expect this to be just the whole story being told. With Star Wars, the expectations are just dumb high for everybody. Yeah. Um, with Maroc, dude, we even went to great lengths to look up Star Killer's original concept, and we literally <laughs> thought it was Star Killer. Yeah. So, I mean, me personally, Ahsoka is like the best when it comes to visuals. Um, the, it, episode five with Anakin was just pure cinema, even though it doesn't really need much dialogue. It was just the transitions alone, you know, and how it was portrayed. Seeing Clone Wars Anakin just walk through a dust cloud on, uh, they were on Geo, I believe, mm -hmm. or yeah, <laughs> and just one glimpse is Annie, and the other glimpse it's Vader. Yeah, <laughs> and even at times it's Annie and Vader. Yeah, but yeah, uh, right after that, you mm -hmm. know, he is the body of Anakin, transitions to the body of Vader, and then when he speaks as Anakin, his voice is Vader. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm dude, I'm so hyped. I haven't gone back and rewatched it yet. Yeah, same. So I'm only sitting on that raw, like the first time I watched it. But I'm watching Clone Wars right now. I'm doing a full walk watch through of the saga. Do it every year yeah. at the start of the year. Um Attack of the Clones is just so good. It's such a good movie. And it only gets hate because of how critics treated Hayden. It was the dialogue, you know, um, for sure. Um, it seemed really wonky to people, just the way that the script was said. Yeah. But if you interpret it a different way and understand the script, yeah, you know, and you're open-minded, when he says he hates sand, it's a literal meaning. He grew up as a slave on a sandy-ass planet. So... Mm -hmm. A deeper meaning than just being a meme you know 100 percent. and people always say that that's like cringe but let's 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 literally analyze it he says i hate sand it's it's not soft like you and then they kiss like that's literally w riz it worked it was a w pickup line he was vulnerable. He got her guard down and then he complimented her. Made her smile, made her feel things. And then they kissed. Fell in love. Did it that night. Got married. Got married within a week. How crazy is that? They got married a within a freaking week. Oh, 100%. That's a they knew it though. They just knew it. Yeah. Anakin was probably like, you don't understand. I'm the chosen one. I know I know how these things work. We're destined to be together. She's like, shit, you're right. No, but Padme was extremely attracted to Anakin. Even as, even when he was a little kid, she was extremely attracted to him. Pause right there. Just what... It's what's in the book. I have a uh, the Star Wars archive. It's sick. Check it out. Check it out. This is the best purchase I've ever made. So it's uh everything about Star Wars ever. Each movie, there's like 250 pages for each movie breaking down scenes breaking down scripts breaking down like what characters were meant to do what characters were meant to be thinking um concept art like this is it's literally everything star wars ever is in this and this is for the episodes one to three i ordered four to six and that gets here like in the next two days which i'm super hyped for but point being um, Padme was super attracted to Anakin and even, uh, as a grown up, like she was like, holy shit. Like, look at this stud, look at this piece of meat in my, in my apartment right now. Like, wish these other idiots weren't here, wish these Jedi would get out of here and these guards get them out of here. 
but I love the I love the prequels, man. There's something like it's a different flavor than you get. It's like vanilla cherry coke. And then in the originals, it's just old fashioned McDonald's Coke, nice carbonated cold. You know what you're gonna get. It's not that new crap. It's not that sure. Coke Zero that they gave us in seven, eight, and nine. But I, I I loved it. I loved it. Um, we're at an hour, and I don't want to keep you too much longer. So how about we head into the mailbag? Welcome back, everybody, to the Archives Podcast. We are here with the Galactic Dispatches sent in by you guys. Shout out to you guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, join the Discord, the new Archives Podcast Discord. Hit us up on Twitter or Instagram at Star Wars TAP or anywhere at SoTico. First question is in from Nick. Now, he asks, what if, through some slip up, Darth Bane was killed in the Thought Bomb, thus killing off 100% of the Sith. How would the Skywalker Saga play out? Do you know about Darth Bane's lore? Uh, not all of it, to be quite honest with you. I do not know. Okay, so in this moment he's referring to, Darth Bane was leading a... He wasn't leading it. There was a, a Sith above him still that his his ideology just wasn't there with the Sith. He he wanted to follow Revan's teachings, what Revan thought was best for the Sith, which was uh, an apprentice and a master. The other guy was going to get in the way of that because he wanted the Sith to be just like, essentially, if... The dark side was all absorbed within two people. They would be so much stronger rather than if it was spread out amongst hundreds of people. You know, does that make sense? Right. That was Bane's mindset. So, in the middle of this fight between all of the Sith and a bunch of Jedi, Bane goes, hey, let's do the Thought Bomb. And the Thought Bomb was like a ritual that was a force bomb essentially anyone that was force sensitive was thanos basically and killed bane knew how to do it to where he wouldn't be affected by it um at least physically mentally it kind of toyed with him a bit he was always paranoid afterwards but he killed every single sith and he's he was it on that planet he meets his apprentice xana who had just killed two Jedi. And she's this little nine-year-old girl. She killed two Jedi with her mind. And he uh, basically adopts her as his apprentice. Um, so that's the lore of the Thought Bomb. So the question, um, what if Bane was also killed in that bomb, killing 100% of the Sith? I still think some Jedi would stumble upon teachings of the Sith through like a holocron or something. And I feel like the Sith would come back because everyone's always going to have these radical ideals, you know. I feel like the the saga would just play out up until like what, episode two-ish really you wouldn't get darth maul in episode one would you if no then yeah you would just click on wood trade anakin and that's it he just grow up peacefully mm -hmm. and just being in paranoia of like sith to come back and never do mm -hmm. and yeah very interesting it's hard to think that far forward from Darth Bane all the way to the Skywalker saga. Because right. there's like a thousand years that goes on. I think Butterfly Effect. Uh, it's just a little bit too hard to tell. But I think yeah. it would be interesting to see. Good question though. Next one is from GC. What would you do if you had complete control of the Separatists? The CIS. The army. The droid army. If you were 
in complete control. If you were Grievous, what would you do? Uh, if you were Dooku. Because Dooku was the guy. He was the CEO. We're scrapping the B1 protocol droids. <laughs> Nothing but B2s, DDKs, and commandos from here on out. <laughs> the B1s were sick, but only for civilians. They were very, Not very, for Jedi. very cheap. Yeah. That's why they just, yeah, they could produce millions at like a percentage of a dollar, you know? Yeah. It was crazy. I would have put more, like if, if I'm not influenced by Palpatine, and if I'm not pigeon held, I'm putting at least 10 times more droids per battle. But obviously he couldn't do that. He had to nerf it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the war would keep going. Um, but yeah, that's what I would do. I would invest more in fleets as well. Because I think their fleets were pretty mid. Pretty mid. And that's that's considering how good that they were. Like, you had Trench, you had Grievous. Um, you had all the commando droids. Really, really cool technology, too. That won battles, killed clones. But, eh, is what it is. From Black Ice. What do you think would have happened if the Mandalorians didn't go extinct? So I guess this is asking, what if the Empire didn't bomb Mandalore? Um, they would... Hmm. I think there would be a threat. For sure. I think so too. And maybe like one of the bigger threats. Yeah. Initially. When they don't have much of a, a defense system built up. And they have dummies, rednecks, hillbillies, drunks, and clones that don't want to be there. <laughs> yeah. I think Mandalorians could have done some damage. Maybe not too much damage, but enough damage to make some noise. Because at the end of the day, they got slaughtered in one night. So, they didn't have too much to do, but they would have made some noise. A nice early rebellion. Yep. Um, from David, if Palpatine somehow died during the Clone Wars, do you think that Dooku and the CIS would have gone forward with the construction of the Death Star? I personally think no. You don't think so? No. I don't yeah. either. I don't think Dooku is a big fan of the Death Star. I don't think Dooku was a Sith Lord as Sith as he's titled. No. I mean, if you go back <laughs> to the conversation he had with Obi Wan, you know, he felt empathy. I think is the right word for you know his dead apprentice mm -hmm. or sympathy, one of those. Um, and then he tried to convince Obi Wan to turn, and Obi Wan denied. <clears throat> Do you think, I think he had, I'm sorry. Do you think he was trying to get Obi-Wan to be his Dooku? Kind of like how Plagueis had Palpatine as his apprentice. Palpatine had Maul training in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And then he had Dooku under his thumb. So do you think Dooku was trying to get Obi-Wan to not join the sith but just join him like genuinely yeah just because of uh, the reminisce of qui-gon you know mm -hmm. he spoke highly of the of obi-wan to dooku so he definitely wanted him as an apprentice for sure over anakin he hated absolutely Annie. absolutely he couldn't stand anakin even as like competitors in a in a Navy fight. Couldn't stand them. Uh, this one's from Alan. How would Sidious's plans have changed if Vader left Mustafar uninjured? His plans would have changed because he'd be dead, in my opinion. I think so, too. Anakin was 100% taken over. 
he would have struck him down and there was nothing Pop could have done. Yeah, he even it, said it to Padme, like, we can overthrow the Emperor. Literally. And it wasn't until the suit that came and completely morphed Anakin into the ground. Yeah. Like, the suit was just, I, I don't know the exact number, but he had X amount of needles going into his body. And the suit was also vulnerable to lightning. Mm -hmm. So... It definitely nerfed the poop out of him. And it and it's funny, yeah. they the suit basically gave Anakin high heels as well. Like he was always yeah. walking on high heels. The way that they put his uh prosthetics in. But yeah, yeah, um how would Sidious's plans have changed? Uh he would have had to defend himself for his life. Cause Vader's slaughtering him. Especially if he just, like, if he leaves Mustafar uninjured, I, I figure that implies he kills Obi-Wan. Yeah, and after he kills Obi-Wan, I think it's just like the ultimate ending in the game where he's just, it's after killing Obi-Wan, Anakin's so gone. <laughs> yeah. Before they leave the planet, he's killing Bell. 100%. From Joseph. Shout out to Joseph. He was in my stream. Um, after watching Tico play Battlefront 2 on YouTube... I have to know, how would the Battle of Endor had gone down if Thrawn was given a Super Star Destroyer and was overseeing the Battle of Endor? Is a Super Star Destroyer the Star Destroyer from Episode Nine, or is it um, like the Chimera? Chimera is a Star Destroyer. Executor is like a super, where it has ah. Star Destroyers along with it towing. So the Super Star Destroyers are the big mamma jammas, like this big. Where's my other yeah. Like that big compared to a Star Destroyer that's like that big. And they, so, like the yeah. cannons and the weapons and all that are just second to none. So basically what if Thrawn was piloting the <clears throat> Executor instead of Piet? It's yeah. over. It's, it's Jover. It's done. Even you know, if he was involved with the battle, I think he's one step ahead of them. You got a rookie. Yeah, you. I mean, dude, you have a mastermind. Palp knew it, too. Yeah. That the Chiss are not to be intimidated and you don't underestimate. No. Um, that's why he rose to the ranks so high. Mm -hmm. Um. No, that, yeah, no, definitely it would have been over. He would have knew what to do if he was given that uh, military um, coordination, is, I think is the words I'm looking for. If that was his project, like, this is your base, this is what you do, you're deployed here, mm -hmm. I'm done. It's, it's over. The Endor Rebellion could not have done anything different, in my opinion. Um <clears throat> I, yeah, Family Guy made fun of it too. It was Piet and his co-pilot, or whoever was standing at the helm, and they were chasing the Falcon, and it's just going like this, and he's like, they're maneuvering hazily to the left. <laughs> it was like, damn, you got some maneuvers, huh? <laughs> Let me put something in perspective for you. So, General Veers and Darth Vader, they were equals in the Navy. How crazy is that? Were they actually? Yeah. Anakin remained a general in the Navy. Like, he never stopped being General Skywalker. He was just Darth Vader. And they referred to him as Lord because he was a Lord of the Sith. Mm -hmm. um, but he was still a general. That's why he had to appeal to Grand Moff Tarkin, who rank he outranked him. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty crazy to put into perspective like that. Like, that's why he was able to appoint Piet as Admiral. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool to think about. Veers was him. Veers was up there. Died in an AT-80. That's crazy. Veers is Timothy. Next question is in from Kyle. Let's say everything in Phantom Menace goes down how it happened up to the point of the election 
and then Bail Antilles of Alderaan was elected Chancellor. What happens to the Jedi, the Sith, and the Separatists? So, what happens if Palpatine loses the election? No. Do you know what I think? Just offer it. I think... Mm. I think... He outs the Sith. Genuinely. Because oh. he... Palpatine. I think he just aligns with the Separatists. Him, Dooku, Maul... I think they, the Sith, or the Separatists, become the the Sith Empire. I think he brings back the Sith Empire. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with he does his own thing. The Clone Wars never happens, and he finds an alternate plan, something that's just as devious as Order 66. Because let's be honest, Order 66 was just a brutal stab in the back. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, the moment that he gave that order out and they just turned. Yeah. A brilliant executed plan. And it's manipulative as fudge. Um, I really, yeah, I mean, I kind of want to veer like he, he would towards lean towards the Sith Empire. Mm hmm. Do you want know, to like just thinking about it? What I want to know, who was the last Jedi to die by a clone's gunshot due to Order sixty six? Like, how long were they tracking him? That kind of thing, you know. How long did he last? I mean, didn't Order sixty six really go on all the way to like Episode six? It was just like you know what I mean. Like, it kind of went on. Like, in, we're in Bad Batch Season 2, and the clones are kind of sick of it right now. Yeah. So, it, it didn't last too long. Maybe a handful of years. Like, the, the hunt for Jedi was always a thing, but the clones stopped oh, doing mean, it, so they brought out Inquisitors. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, the, the order expired. Yeah. <laughs> like, we'll give Appreciate you a, a, a three-month, or a three-year subscription, and then you're on your own, palps. But, man, yeah. I want to know how long that Jedi lasted. Was it a month? A couple months? A week? A couple I'm days? I'm waiting to see in live action. Yeah. He's alive. We know he's alive. Yep. That's cool. Uh, last question here is from Brandon. I'm going to be honest. I haven't liked the Mandalorian since season one when he was actually collecting on and hunting bounties. I was ecstatic during Book of Boba Fett when he began bounty hunting again, but it seems like his days in the guild are over. That being said, do you think that Disney slash Lucasfilm are really missing out on a potentially great series, and we are missing a drastic point by looking at the Mandalorian with rose-colored glasses? Yeah, I think so. I uh, the, the character of Din Djarin is... It's in the dirt. It's mudded. It's dirty. It's it's lost its muster. It's like the Walkman. It was a brilliant device. Came out. You're playing CDs. It was nothing like it of its era. And then, boom. The iPod comes out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's literally how I feel with The Mandalorian. Season one, I mean, it was great. And then it just, it took a toll and it's so sad. Yeah. So hopefully with the movie, you know, cause it is a Mandoverse. Hopefully with the movie, they redeem Mando. You know what I mean? Cause like. Uh, yeah. I say get rid of that Mandoverse name and we just call it heir to the empire era. I mean, that's what, yeah, that's what really, yeah, that's what the Mandoverse era is. Yeah, yeah. it's the Thrawn era. G give Thrawn his flowers. Mando's just, it's, it's, it's Thrawn's world. Mando's just living in it. Yep. <laughs> 100%. I'm, yeah, I'm more excited to see what Thrawn's getting up to than Mando. Genuinely, like, I'll watch it, 
because it'll, it's Star Wars. And it's like Star Wars that I've liked in the past. It's not, I'm not going to watch any of the goofy stuff that comes out, like uh, the kids Jedi show, that kind of <laughs> stuff. Like I don't watch everything. I don't play everything, but right. the Mando I'll watch. I have a poster on my wall for crying out loud, but it was from season one to be fair. When it was good. It was hey, good. Man. I freaking... But that yeah. is the last. <sighs> yeah. We get that fraud off of our screen, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to wrap it up, folks, for the Archives podcast. We appreciate MJ for coming through. I could talk Star Wars with MJ for hours. We'll see you guys next time for episode 22. Make sure to leave us a five-star review. Subscribe to us everywhere at Star Wars TAP. Join the Discord. Get in the game tap in and may the force be with you